Hi, everybody. Welcome to February 9th cooking class. We are making soup tonight. We love our soups. I'm glad it got cold a little bit again. It's not a 65 degree sunny day like it was all weekend. It's getting chilly again. So back on track for soup season. We are making Italian wedding soup which basically has chicken meatballs and pasta and veggies and that sort of thing. It's going to be delicious. And we are also making Parmesan breadsticks to go with it. It's kind of a meal in a bowl. So we're just making a, you know, yummy little side dish to go with it. So let's get started, shall we? Two things. Oh, so many things. I was really like ready to go. Let me do my, let me do my introductory lec lecture here. So here we are, everybody's in their own kitchens. However, we are a group since that is what TRS is. So we're all in this together, friends. And some of you are out there by yourselves. Some of you are out there with friends, family support, whatever. So we take our time to make sure that everybody finishes each task before we move on. So there'll be times I'll be asking you to put a letter or something in the chat to make sure we're all caught up. But we don't wanna leave a man behind. That's not how we do it, because we are striving for independence. We want our friends at home to be as independent as possible. So helpers out there, it's hard. It's hard, but let them do it and help when it's needed, that kind of thing. But we'll wait, so it's fine. So that being said, the other part is safety, safety, safety. We're going to be using knives. We're going to be using the oven and the stove. So I have to rely on you that you're hearing me and that you're using your hot pads, you're keeping your fingers out of the way, you're making good knife selections, things like that, so that you don't get hurt, okay? Safety first. I'd like to say I'm watching you, but I'm watching myself, so there's that. Um, so I think that's it, so let's get started. We're gonna wash our hands, because we gotta wash our hands, and we're gonna use hot water, soap, 20 seconds. Here we go. Your your it all, baby. All right. The second thing I gotta do for sweater, because it's my favorite, is I need a garbage bowl. It's my favorite, you guys. So if you want to play along, I see in your pictures, you guys, you guys have no idea. I get so excited when you send me pictures. First of all, I just get excited when you send me pictures. Second of all, if I see a garbage bowl on your counter, I'm like, oh, they're using a garbage bowl. I get really excited. So, garbage bowl. It's so funny. Walk back and forth to the garbage. Somebody has a really cute little flowery shaped bowl in their kitchen. I forget who it was, but I saw it and I got really excited. So, anyways, garbage bowl. Okay, let's see, where are we going to start? We're going to start with making our meatballs because they bake for a while. So we're just going to get that all the way done. That's what we're going to do. Then we're going to chop some veggies, make some soup, make some breadsticks. Bada bing, bada bang. Thanks, Alex. So are you. Oh, one more thing. If you guys have questions, um, our little, lovely, wonderful friend Jacqueline Lee is out there. To answer your questions, typing in the chat. So if you have questions and I might not catch them, make sure that your chat thing says to all panelists and attendees. Otherwise, I'm the only panelist. So if you say nice things, thank you. But if you ask a question and I miss it, Jack can't see it. So make sure you switch that. If you need help from an outside source. So here we go. We are going to start with preheating our oven to 400 degrees. I have to empty my oven. I always have my paper chefs don't worry in here. I should be on camera. Okay, 400 degrees. Okay, right. let me put the, I don't need my recipe for my sausage out anymore. Okay, so let's gather, shall we? Let's gather. We need, let's start with the ingredients. Let's start with that. Okay, there we go. All right, we're going to start with ground chicken and ground chicken sausage 
or turkey or pork or whatever. Most of you got my email about the mystery chicken situation. And I know some of you found some, so good job. My Safeway let me down for them. So we've got ground chicken, ground chicken sausage. Now we need one egg. You guys, if you need eggs, please, I have so many eggs. I'm a little excited. Eggs, one egg. Okay, then we need breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs. Let me not draw my egg. Just set it down, Jim. Breadcrumbs. I found out today, I learned something new today, you guys. I found out that real panko is gluten and dairy free. I was so excited. So I was, I was just like, I was so excited. I was looking for all kinds of ways to do breadcrumbs that weren't going to be bread. Yay. Okay. Um, Parmesan cheese. I'm going to use not Parmesan cheese. So Parmesan cheese. I'm going to use nutritional yeast because I don't eat all of dairy. So Parmesan cheese. We need dried oregano. Oregano. Minced garlic. That's brand new. Ooh. And then we need salt and pepper. I guess I don't need to do this right now, but I just really wanted to. There we go. Come on, mama. There it is. Oh, fresh, fresh, freshy. Okay, salt and pepper. And if you want, red pepper flakes. That's what I was gonna do too, Rosemary, was um, the rosemary, what, oh, sorry, that's your name. I almost did oats too. Yeah, I think it's a total good substitute. I almost did it. And the oven is for the meatballs because are you guys not making meatballs? Carolyn um, or Andrea, whoever's typing to me. Um, baking our meat, meatballs instead of pan frying. Thanks, Jack. Optional red pepper flakes. I just feel like I went like bing, 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 bing. So that's why the oven's on is to bake our meatballs. So let's get out supplies. We got a big pile. We'll review. You're not making meatballs. Well, then there you go. Perfect. Okay. So we need a baking sheet. I'm going to get one with edges. We're making balls. So you don't want it to roll off your tray, you know? So edges are good. <laughs> and we're going to get, uh-huh, a half cup mixing cup. Half cup mixing cup. A teaspoon. I'm like reading the, uh, uh, that might be it. And a mixing spoon. I'm gonna get a little scooper with edges. Yep, 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 yep. What's gonna happen there? Okay. How are we doing? Should we review? Do we wanna review? We got a lot of stuff sitting here, let's review. Ground chicken, ground chicken sausage, 400 degrees, but if you're not making meatballs, you don't need the oven. So there's that. Ground chicken, ground chicken meatballs. Oh, we are gonna need it later for the breadsticks, but I can't even look right now. We'll review them. I'm an egg, breadcrumbs, Parmesan, oregano, minced garlic, salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes if you're using them. And then we have a baking sheet, a mixing spoon, a 
half a cup and a teaspoon that I need to rinse out. Okay. Are we good? Let's do R for ready. R for ready. Means we're gonna, you know, measure, mix. Mm-hmm, Schmerky, good, thanks. Nikki, yes. Donnie, yes. Ladies, yes. Mark, yes. Katina, woo! <laughs> woo, -hoo -hoo! Mom, Amber, and Blue Blue, Andrea, Loretta, the guys. Yes, yes, Rolly. Good. I feel like I'm taking attendance again. Tommy, yay. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. I think that means we're almost pretty much good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're pretty good. All right, all right. So here we go. Next thing we're gonna do is prep our baking sheet. So um, I'm gonna line mine with foil. You could also, if you don't have foil, um, just put some spray down after uh, Foil means less dishes, so it works right. I'm gonna tuck it into the edges. Tuck it into the edges with my fingers. If you have fingernails, be careful you don't slice it with your fingernails. I do that all the time. And then you can kind of, once you get it crushed in there, you can kind of wrap it up around the edges. Yeah, baby. And then if you have cooking spray, go ahead and give a spray. If not, you can use some olive oil and just kind of rub that around. Do I have cooking spray? I do. There's so much in my cupboard. When you're using cooking spray, you do not need to hold it right here. Hold it far away. Just give it a little coat. You don't have to get wild and wacky. It's not frosting. I've seen some of my friends. I'm like, but that's frosting. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. We're gonna set this baby aside. And then we're gonna mix. You guys, we're just moving, <laughs> moving right along. I opened the garlic and forgot I opened the garlic. Now I have garlic. <laughs> that was fun. Good, I'm gonna use it from right there. I'm gonna use it from right there. How it's gonna go. Okay, we need a mixing bowl. This one might work. So this is where it gets a little wacky because the measurements are like, if you bought your ground turkey or your ground chicken, you probably bought it in a one pound container, but it has us using less than that. So for the sausage, you're gonna use half a pound. So look at your thing that you have, and if it's one, then you're gonna use half. I just made my sausage with some of you, and I have a whole pound, so I'm gonna take half out, but I gotta find a container. I thought this would be fast. Half a pound, 10 ounces. A pound is, wait, I have this. It's 16 ounces, right? A pound of 16 ounces. Yeah, so that means, hold on, I'm thinking. What a pound 16 ounces? Wow, on the spot measuring. Hold on, I'm gonna figure it out, unless somebody answers. How many ounces in a pound? Yes, I was right. It's 16. Yay. Okay. So if you have 10, 
then that means you have that's about three quarters so you want eight so just cut off like okay wait you have 10 you need eight so just cut off like a quarter of it you just need a little bit off it's weird i'm gonna eyeball mine and do half what there <laughs> that's my half count <laughs> And then it gets even weirder. It gets even weirder. Or that's true. You could just make extra meatballs. <laughs> um, we're going to use a whole, we're only going to use three quarter pounds of our regular ground chicken turkey, whatever you have. So three quarter, I'm just going to eyeball it and cut it that way. I have garlic all over the place, you guys. So let's remember, let's talk about raw meat. When we use raw meat and we touch raw meat, we immediately wash our hands. We don't touch anything else after we've touched raw meat. So I'm gonna open this package of raw meat. Come here, baby. I like to try to keep one hand clean. So we'll see how that goes. Let's see. Garbage bowl, love you. So mine's in a little, you know, where the three quarters, I cut it in half, and then I'm gonna cut one of these in half, and then I'm gonna use that. So this is going in storage, in storage. The three quarter pound, it's very strange. And honestly, you guys, it really doesn't matter. You might just have extra meatballs, like Karen said, or you might have less meatballs, it doesn't matter. So we're going to pretend that we're following the recipe, right? All right. So my knife touched my raw meat. It's going in. This hand is so clean. Why is this so hard for me tonight? That's way too big. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me get my lid. I'm gonna get dirty. So I'm touching my raw meat. I'm going straight to the garbage can. And then I'm going straight to the sink. Hot water. 20 seconds. So Alrighty. Woo! Put my turkey away or my chicken, whatever the heck this meat is. Put it away. Okay. So while you guys are doing the math for your meat, I'm gonna write down um, our measurements for what goes in next. And then I'm gonna clean up my garlic explosion. <laughs> it's making me laugh. Good job, Jen. My house smells really good, though, because of my garlic. I can never spell Parmesan right. I always want to make it this like really ethnic word. So you guys so far in your bowl have half a pound of sausage and three quarter pound, so weird, ground chicken. And now we are working on our garlic. I mean, sorry, our garlic. We're working on our spices. I wrote the word garlic. I'm a mess of here. Okay. Okay, here we go, friends. I just laughed, Jack, at my memory of thinking that you had like found my recipe on your own. <laughs> so, 
Here we go. Here we go. We're going to start measuring. We're starting with oh, our egg. <laughs> this is where I love having a garbage bowl. Egg in the bowl. Woo! Owl. The garlic is just wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, just leave that there. <laughs> okay, garlic. No, we're not at garlic. Stop it. Breadcrumbs, half a cup. Always put your cap on your garlic. <laughs> Lesson learned. Especially when you're going to be live teaching everybody how to cook. Brand new container. To open, break tab. I did. Oh, there we go. Okay. Half a cup of breadcrumbs. Make sure when you measure, my friends, that you fill the whole thing up. Some people are scared to fill it up. Don't be scared. Fill it up. Okay. Parmesan cheese. Half a cup. If you don't eat dairy or if you're trying to cut back, nutritional yeast is a great substitute. It's very strange. Very good. Half a cup Parmesan. All right. Next up is oregano. Two teaspoons of oregano. Oh, the garlic. Give me a moment. We'll have a garlic discussion. Huh? All, right. All right. So for the garlic, here. for the garlic, what it says is three cloves. So I always have to look at my container. So for my container, each half a teaspoon equals a clove. So for me, it's a teaspoon and a half of garlic. So it depends on. I've had containers that say other things. And also, I love garlic. And also, it's all over my counter. So, we're just going to scoop some of that in there. Oh, good thing I just cleaned my counter, huh? Okay. And then for salt and pepper, it doesn't say. So, we're just doing a little bit. Let's see. Squeeze into your shoulder, your elbows, friends. Okay, I will go slower. Also, I want to remind you that it's written right here, and Jack's putting it in the chat. So let me reveal. We've done one egg. Our breadcrumbs is half a cup. Our Parmesan cheese is half a cup. Oregano is two teaspoons or garlic is three cloves worth so for me that was a table a teaspoon excuse me a teaspoon and a half and now for salt and pepper we're just doing a little sprinkling a little sprinkling of each If you're using red pepper flakes, it's just a pinch. And you don't even have to use it if you don't want to use it. All right. And then we're going to mix. And I don't need this. So you're just going to mix. You don't want to over mix. You just want to mix it all together. Otherwise, it gets kind of gummy and sticky. We don't want that. So we're just mixing it in. 
Make sure you scrape the bottom. Give it a little flip. Scrape the bottom. Give it a little flip. They get everybody in there. So get all that cheese, all those breadcrumbs. Nice stuff. Okay, getting close. Make sure you're flipping all the way down to the bottom, scraping the sides. And there we go. Yeah, baby. Okay, I'm gonna get a spoon, scoop up my garlic. <laughs> And then we'll finish our meatballs. We've done all the hard work. Now we get to do the fun stuff. Oh, garlic. I will say I've been pretty lucky in cooking classes about making messes and stuff. So I guess tonight's my night. Tonight is my last night. I'm going to use the spoon, you guys, um, one egg, one egg in the meatball. Um, get out yourself a spoon to make your meatballs. I'm just going to stick it in there. I'm going to finish wiping this up. And again, you guys, the ingredients are right here on, I don't know if you can read it, hopefully you can. They are there in case you missed a measurement or an item. Everything that's on that board and everything we gathered is in. You have no ingredients left. I really try and make it a point to only bring over what we need so that we don't get confused and then we'll get the rest of the stuff there. How are we doing, friends? How's our mixing coming? Are we ready to make balls? <laughs> I think we should just put a B. For ball time, ball making time. Woo! -hoo! <laughs> That's really fun. We do not need the half cup measuring cup. Is that true? Let me look. Well, you might need it for the breadsticks. So I'm just gonna set it over here. I'm seeing what we can put away. Mm-hmm. What else do we have here? Tablespoon. We're gonna use the tablespoon only. Oh, and a teaspoon. Tablespoon and teaspoon, you can leave it. Okay, let's see. That's fine, Rosemary, let me know. You don't have to let me know when you're not ready. You just need to let me know when you are ready so that we know when to go. Loretta, Schmirky, Mom, Tommy, Nikki, Rolly, Amber, Katina, yay. Keep them coming, friends, when you're ready. Give me a B, B for bowls. I'm gonna have a sip of water. I'll hold this right here. Did you need it? Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Janie. All right, Andrew. I thought you guys weren't making them. You're confusing me. You keep telling me you weren't making meatballs, but now you tell me you're ready. <laughs> While you guys are finished stirring, did you see the cookbooks are ready? I know some of you ordered your cookbooks, but they're ready. And the way they work while you're stirring, just listen with one ear. Um, the way the cookbooks work is, oh, it wasn't? Sorry. 
Um, oh, that's right, because you told me you found sausage. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, is it's a it's called what's called a Google Doc, which I didn't know what that was six months ago, you guys. So if you don't know what that is, don't feel bad. I didn't know either. But it's basically like kind of like a website. And it's this document that lives, it's alive. And so every time we have a cooking class, you, you don't have to do anything. You just have to save your website. You can bookmark it, save it, whatever. You can download it, but then if you want new stuff, you'll have to do that every time. So it's best to just like know your website. And then we send you the link for the cookbook. And every time we make a new recipe, then it goes in the cookbook. So they're $20. And they're super easy to order. You just go on a website and bada bing, bada boom, and we will send it to you. If you already ordered it and you didn't send it to you, that's because today's been wacky and yesterday's been wacky, but it'll happen. So, you found vegan Parmesan? Oh, that's so cool. Very good, very good. How are we coming, friends? We haven't started making our meatballs. We're just mixing, mixing, mixing. Oh, I did totally read that right. Wrong, Carolyn, you're right. All right, friends, the ladies already. I think we're about half, halfway. When you're ready, you can bring your baking sheet over and Get a spoon. You could, if you have, you could use like an ice cream scoop. Uh huh. If you want. And actually, like if you have jewelry on, I'm gonna take my ring off. Um, because we're gonna use our hands. We're gonna get messy, <laughs> and we're not gonna touch anything besides meat. That's it. So if you have jewelry on. Take it off or glove up. <laughs> All right, the guys are ready. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. Pretty, pretty, pretty. There's about eight of you I haven't heard from. So if you're done and you haven't put a B in the chat, put a B in the chat for me, would you? So I know. Thanks, Luke. And if you haven't put a B in the chat, but you're making meatballs, you're ahead of me. We should just, all we did was measure and we got a ball, a bowl of meat. Smells good. Mm -hmm. Have you guys had wedding soup before? Italian wedding soup I have, but it's been a very long time. Oh, I was going to show you guys something too. You ready? This is the other kind of squash I was thinking we could make together. Acorn squash? Because I don't know about you, but I never had one of these until about a year ago. And it was like, oh, that's so good. But I never had it. So um, if you want to try and make an acorn squash, we could stuff it with like rice and stuff. Seasoning, mm -hmm. stuff like that. If you want. Our spaghetti squashes were so good. I cannot believe how good that was. Whoa. All right. It was. You're right, but it was good. <laughs> but sometimes weird is good. Annie says yes to acorn squash. All right, friends. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, friends. 
I think it's time, about time to move on. If you're not ready and you're still measuring and mixing, we're just gonna make meatballs. So you can just slide right into that when you're done. So just taking, I have like a big-ish soup spoon, ice cream spoon, <laughs> cereal spoon. And I'm just gonna get a scoop of my meat. It says about an inch, I don't know, whatever. It's a scoop. And then you're getting, just do it. Just get in there. Take it in between your two hands. Rolly, rolly. Make a meatball. You might have to like use your fingers too. The thing is, the only thing is, you really want to do them all about the same size. So if you put one down next to another one and it's a lot bigger, pinch some off. Because what will happen is the small ones will be cooked all the way and the other ones won't. See, this one's too small. I'm going to add a little bit to it. You want them to all be cooked all the way. We're not trying to eat raw meat. No. There we go. And these don't spread out like cookies. <laughs> so you don't, they can be, you know, close-ish to each other. Oh, I might need a second pan. Oh, good. Thank you. Nice, not making balls. I kind of prefer mine smaller. I don't like eating giant things. I like things smaller. I keep making them smaller and smaller with each meatball. Get it together, Jen. There we go. That's better. You kind of can start figuring out how much of your spoon you're filling up. I don't know. There we go. No looking good now. Lady! <laughs> yeah, I guess they can be, but not in a soup. <laughs> there. Uh, rolling me, oh, rolling me, oh. This is like, so I know we've talked about this before, but I'm gonna tell you again. Someone's calling me and I'm sorry, but I can't answer you. And literally I can't even make it quiet because I have meat all over my hand. So please enjoy my phone ringing. Anyways, we've talked about this before, but when we make our food from scraps like this, we're putting love into it. And they say, scientists and nutritionists and people say, so when you put love in your food, that it's good for your health. So that's what we're doing. This is hands-on meal, baby. Hands-on. Uh-huh. I'm going to need another pan. There's a baby pan. Meatball, you are too small. Mm-hmm, yeah, no way. No way am I gonna put all here. Dang it. <laughs> My hands are all dirty. Oh, well. Push them a little closer together. Can I get four in a row? Oh, I can get four in a row. Okay, hold on. Maybe, maybe, we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, you can cook them on the stove, but it'll take longer and you won't be able to do other stuff at the same time. Is your oven not working? But you can, and I can tell you how. The nice thing about the oven is we can do other things while they're in there. So, okay, if you're gonna do them on the stove, what you're gonna do is put some olive oil in a frying pan and you can only cook a couple at a time. You can like put like, I don't know, eight or so in a frying pan. And then you gotta just keep turning and turning and turning and flipping them. So they get cooked on all sides and cooked in the middle. And you, so you have, it, it's called cooking in batches. So you can do it that way if you have to. Mm -hmm. 
Peace, your peace. Simmer down, me, Bob. Simmer down. I'm just going to pinch off a little bit here. I'll put you on the next one. I'm still going to need another pinch. Remember, friends, you have meeting hands now. Don't touch anything. Don't scratch your face. Don't take a picture. But if you have people in your house, take pictures of your friends making meatballs. But you can't do it yourself. No meat on the stuff. If you need to do something, you got to wash your hands first, which is what I'm going to have to do. Because I only have room for four more. Curses. One, two, three, four, five, plus four, 20. It says we're supposed to get about 22 to 30. I think that's what I'm going to get. I think I'm going to get about 30. I'm going to need to put like six on another pan. Oh, you're a beast. Are you? Are you? Well, bad. Pinchy. Pinchy, pinchy. This is a fun thing to do with, with friends, though. So mom, dad, friends, you're hanging out. You can help all people. You're allowed. I'll give you permission. All right. I have to go get, I have to wash my hands so I can prep another pan. Right, or right. that's not the word I wanted. Make sure you get under your fingernails. Your feet everywhere. Where's my towel? Oh, yeah. Just put garlic. New towel. How long in the oven? I don't know. I got to look. It's underneath my pan. Uh -huh. No frosting. All right, let's see here. How long in the oven? Ooh. They go in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to set a timer when I do mine for, I'm probably going to set it for 20 just in case I'm going to make mine too small. And then we'll check. So if you're ready to put yours in the oven, start with 20. I'm like, I don't want to get my other hand dirty right now. I'm going to try and do one hand of meatballs, even though the spoon is covered already. It's all right. Oh, fine. <laughs> How's it coming, friends? Doing good? Having fun? You gotta just get over that you're messy. You just gotta get over it. That's what soap is for. You guys, we have three things to make tonight, and this is one. So we are done. You guys are awesome. We are done with one whole thing. And one of them is way easy, if not the next one. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> nice. So when your um, meatballs go in the oven, give me an O. Give me an O for oven. It's my favorite. Thanks, Tommy. There's one or two in here. Oh. 
Pass me both. This one's a baby. I can't have a baby one. Who's getting this? Let's see. We'll put some of you on here. <laughs> some of you on here. Some of you on here. And some of you on here. There we go. <laughs> okay. Everything to the sink. Wash your hands. Oh, Okay. Woo! We did it! Wow, look at all you guys. You're ahead of me. You guys say I go too fast. You guys are awesome. Okay. Keep on going. Use your hot pads if you need to. Put my ring back on so I don't lose it again. Good job, everyone. Woohoo! Okay, let's see. What do we want to do next? We're going to do this next. Yep, 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 yep. We're going to prep. We're going to prep. Yay! Oh, what does all that mean, Karen? <laughs> That's funny. Look at all these O's. Oh, I didn't set my timer. Timer at 20. Okay. Let's see where my O's are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty minutes. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven so far. So we're starting with 20. It could take longer, but we're starting with 20. Minutes, that is. Is that 13? That's 14? I think that's 14. I lose count, you guys. Dang. I got to count over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Bye, Alex. 13. 13, 14, 15, 16, which means there's six more people. Six more people finishing up their meatballs. Oh, I don't have to count you, Elizabeth. So five more people finishing up their meatballs. Oh, wait, four. <laughs> I'm like looking at my list. There's some doubles in here. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it, got it. So one, two, three. There's one. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Good work, friends. I think tonight's going to be good because we only have, what, we have three veggies to chop which will be fine. Yeah. And then we just got to, oh, I know what I'm going to do real quick. Yeah, that's good. That's good, uh, Karen. I, yes, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect. I feel like, yeah, that's one of the options they gave you. So that's perfect. Yeah, they want like orzo or that achini, a pepe. <laughs> Mine's not small, but that's because I don't use regular noodles. It's all good. Um, I was gonna say, what was I gonna say? It was gonna be really good. I don't know. What was I gonna say, you guys? <laughs> oh, I know what I was gonna say. Elizabeth, we gotta make broth. If anybody out there is making broth from bouillon, let's do that now. Good job, Rebecca. So I know Elizabeth's making broth and bouillon and I am too. 
So I'm gonna start that. So we need, we need eight cups of water. I'm gonna do it on the stove. That's a lot of water. I don't even know. Oh. Cups. Eight cups. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So for those of you that are finishing your meatballs, I just have to make my my broth. But if you bought it in a can or a jug, you're good. Okay, we're gonna hold eight. You can hold eight. Oh, good. That was weird. So this is just for broth. Don't worry, meatballs go in for 20 minutes. So Elizabeth, I'm just boiling my eight cups of water in the back. Anyone else that has to make bouillon, I'm just getting it boiling in the back. Eight cups. <laughs> A lot of cups. All right, friends, I think we're close. I think we're close. So I'm going to start listing out our next ingredients. All righty, all righty. So next up is we're going to chop veggies. So let's do that. So we need half an onion two carrots, and two stalks of celery. Yeah, perfect, you got it, Elizabeth. Okay, cool. So half an onion, two carrots, two celery. And I love it that I can just buy two carrots. And then we also need a vegetable peeler. And a knife. So here's my knife conversation, friends. The bigger, the better. These are hard vegetables. So that means you have to work hard. So the bigger the knife, the better, because you have to work less hard. Work harder, not what? Smarter, not harder. I almost said it backwards. Work smarter, not harder. I'm gonna turn on this light right here. Does that help? Sure. Anyways, so the bigger the better. They look scary, but you don't have to work as hard. If you use the small little steak knife sizes, then you have to saw really hard and push really hard, and that's when you can hurt yourself. So you want a big knife, a big knife, okay? So let's start with Let's start with, oh, and if you want to, let's get a little mixing bowl to put all this in so that it has somewhere to sit. I'm going to start with the carrots because I want to. So we're getting out carrots and we're going to peel them. We should probably give them a little rinsey. They grow in the dirt. So let's give them a little rinse. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Good job, Loretta. That works. Okay, so with our carrots, we're going to peel them. This is why I love a garbage bowl. We're just gonna peel. When you peel, you wanna use your peeler. Push hard and push away from yourself. Away from yourself. And then you're just gonna rotate. And I do it about a little more than halfway down to the bottom. And then you rotate. 
So now the other end is sticking down. And you go back and you do the other half. Rotate, rotate. All the way around. There we go. Second carrot. Halfway down, a little higher than halfway. Push hard. And push away from yourself. Slide it down your carrot. I'm just gonna peel everywhere. Rotate. Do it again. All right. Very good. And we are done with our peeler. Back in the drawer. He's all clean. I'll give you a minute to finish peeling. And get my pulley on now. jars. When do they get so hard to open? <laughs> Why? It feels not like here. I can do it. I can do the right thing. Maybe. Okay. Um, the bouillon doesn't go in first, so that's why I just got a second pan out. All right, friends, we're gonna chop these carrots. I cannot open this jar. <laughs> this is such a bummer right now. <laughs> okay, so then we have a new jar. I might be opening the new jar. All right, carrots. What we're going to do is we got to chop off the, the end because that's gross. Then we're going to chop off the pointy part. So big knife, chop off the end, chop off the pointy. And then we're just going to chop down the carrot. And these should be like bite-sized pieces. So loud. For me, when I start to get to the big end, I'm gonna cut those in half again. I don't have a jar up in the red. I used to have one of those grippy things. I'm gonna look for it. I don't know where it is. But I also have Phil, he's not home. <laughs> All right. So I'm just sliding down and you're going like, the, my, my fun little trick is put the knife down in the front and push down the back, down the front. Down in the back. Here you go. Pressure. Under pressure. When you get down to the last little piece, I like to make a bridge with my fingers. Hold it nice and still. Then you can go through. If it's scary, you can lay it down on its side and cut it that way. You want to feel comfortable with what you're doing. So for me, with these big pieces, they're huge to me. So I'm going to cut them in half because. I don't want to put that big piece in my mouth. It's too big. That's even big, but that's okay. So I'm just gathering some of my big pieces and cutting them in half. Which feels like maybe it's going to be most of my pieces. All right, that'll work. And then I'm gonna gather these up and put them in the bowl. That's just gigantic. You can use your knife to be a scooper. As long as you're safe, don't jam it into your hand. There we go. All right, carrot number two. Cut off the tip and the tail. And here we go again. 
Push down the front, down the back, down the front, down the back. How are we doing meatballs? My meatballs have seven minutes. Last piece. Be safe. Woo! Here we go. Chopping the big ones. Chop it in half. Yeah, baby. I feel like we've used a lot of carrots lately. You're all done, Luke. Good job. You did all your carrots or all your veggies. Oh, getting closer. Good enough, I think. I think we're here. I think we got it. Nice. Good job, friends. Something outside my house. <gasps> my jar opener just got here. <laughs> That's fun. He doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. The minute he walks in the door, he be like, <laughs> good job, Loretta. I'm gonna just take out my two celeries and put this away real quick. Oh, my dough is defrosted. Yay! That's good. That was good, good, good. Carrots and celery done. Nice. Um, so I'm going to talk about celery real quick, you guys. But if you're still chopping, that's fine. You can still just listen and do it's the same thing. We're going to wash it, though. Celery tends to hold dirt in the scoopy part. So give a good rinse of your celery. And then you're still going to chop off the white part. And then you're just going to do the same way with the carrots. The only thing with the celery is, see how it looks like a little rainbow? When you set it down this way on your counter, it won't roll around. If you set it this way, it's like a teeter-totter. So set it down with the rainbow up. And then you're just going to cut little pieces. Push down the front, down the back, if you need to. This one chops a little easier. Nice, Nikki. You guys are getting so good. You don't even need me. You just need me to tell you the recipe. I'm going to go. Well, that's really fun. Okay, here's a fun thing with celery. You put your knife blade down, your tip down, and then you can just push it in and go boop, push, boop, boop, boop. Kind of fun, makes me feel fancy. <laughs> and I'm so fancy. Some of this celery though, I might need to cut you in half. Two more. Okay. Let's see if I can do the fancy way. If you want to try the fancy way, put your knife down in the front, get it where you want it, and then pull it down, pick it up. Boop, you're just rocking the back down when you slide the celery in. Woo, it's so fancy. 
King Bar, come back. <laughs> Yay, that's so fun. <gasps> My jar opener. Your timing's so perfect. I can't open a jar. Loretta was like, Do you have a jar opener? I'm like, Yeah, but he's not home. <laughs> I was going to open the new jar if I couldn't get it. <laughs> I would give up. <gasps> Did it already? One hand or what? I'm going to open this jar again. <laughs> oh, good job, Elizabeth. Mine is not. I'm going to do it right now, though. I'm boiling finally. So I'm going to stop after carrots and celery, and then we'll talk onion. I'm going to cook my bouillon. Oh, and my meatballs are about to go. Take forever. This is just my broth, you guys. Don't worry about it. I should have done this in advance, but it didn't. Three. I am going to need the new jar. Four. Okay, so if your timer goes off for your meatballs, which mine just did, we have to check and make sure they're done. So I'm going to pull my pan out, pop pads, of course. And you guys remember, we don't freak out when the timer goes off. When the timer goes off, we don't go, ah, ah. We just like, put your stuff down, get your hot pads. So I'm going to get myself just like a little butter knife. I'm going to check my meatball. I'm going to pull out one pan. Woo! You look good. Pull them out. Top one. I'm going to try and find the biggest one. Maybe it's you. And make sure there's no pink on the middle. <gasps> there's no pink in the middle. Amazing. We're done. Here's the lovely thing about chicken and turkey. Look, no grease on my pan. Isn't that great? So um, my meatballs are done. That is so exciting. And good news, our oven stays at 400. So you don't have to do anything. So if your meatballs are done, you're gonna take them out. If they're not done, Put them in for like five more minutes. What about you? What about you, baby Pam? <laughs> They're adorable. They're done. Oh. Okay, so good. Oh Okay, how's our veggies coming, friends? I'm gonna, we're gonna um, kind of take a pause because I'm assuming that most of your timers are gonna go off in a minute. So that you can check your meatballs. Ah, I can open a new jar. <laughs> Mercy. I don't know what number it is on. Here's on five. That's seven. There we go. Okay. Now my bouillon's done. The 
guess it, it makes sense that it's this much liquid because it has to cook pasta and other stuff. So that makes sense. All right, it makes sense. Just felt like so much. All right, friends. Celery's done. The meatballs are done. Let me see how we're doing. Let me come read some some messages from my peeps. How do you know if they're done? You will know if your meatballs are done when there's no pink in the middle. You do not want to have um, pink in the middle. That is not good. Um, you know, some people like that with their meat, but it's really not good for you. <laughs> done with the celery. Good, good, good. So let's do this. Let's put an O when you're ready to cut your onion. That means you've checked your meatballs, your celery's done, and like you're in a good place. So, oh yeah, well, Elizabeth, you just got it, girl. <laughs> the O means you are ready to cut onion. So the guys are ready, Nikki's ready, Elizabeth, Schmirky's ready, mom's ready, Andrea's ready, Shannon's ready, Amber's ready, Sterling's ready, nice, Katina. Get it. Mm, Tommy, good, good. Yay, good, Luke, nice. Ladies, good. You're doing awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 15, 16, 17, 18. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. 19. Nice. Okay, cool. Good, 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 good. You guys are awesome. You are awesome. Most of your meatballs are done, yeah? I'm assuming just because. Fine work, but also I guess if you made ginormous meatballs, then that would not be the case. <gasps> you guys are great. Okay. Your poor eyes, oh no, that could be my my destiny. <laughs> oh, that's probably smart, <laughs> yeah. Big meatballs equals more cooking time. All right, so onion, onion, onion. For those of you that know me, you know why we did our onion last, because I like to cook mine first. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my soup pot out. So um, awesome. So let's get our soup pots out. Wow, that was exciting. And as I cut my onion, I'm just gonna cook it. So soup pot and a tablespoon of olive oil, which you guys know I don't measure. I'm just gonna put some in. But if you want to measure, it's a tablespoon. So that's just ready. I happen to already have a half an onion because I made a half an onion this morning. <laughs> so nice. Okay, so half an onion. If you need to cut your onion, you got to cut the, the stems off of both ends and cut it in here. Clean. And even my dishwasher's not ready for my dishes. They're clean. That's a bad thing to complain about. That's funny. So, anyways, onions cut in half, peeling off the skin. And there's that weird inner layer. Make sure you get that little baby. Um, one tablespoon, Loretta, of olive oil. And so now for our onion, I cut mine weird today. So, whatever. When we cut onions, we like to have them laying flat side down. 
So however you cut your onion, flat side down. And I just work my way from one side of the onion to the other. This is not gonna be as good as it normally is because I cut my onion weird this morning. So I'm gonna make a mess. So let's make a mess together, shall we? So I'm just gonna start cutting little slices down on the onion. And normally they're like these cute little rainbows. <laughs> you know, I know I talk about my rainbows. Well, I didn't cut mine so it has rainbows today. So once I start getting too close to the other side, it's hard for me to hold on to. So I like to turn it around. And then I'll cut it the other way. Fine. <laughs> that piece wants to be difficult. You go in the garbage bin. <laughs> So just get it as good as you can. My last little piece is a little wacky. I'm just gonna lay it down and chop it up. So now I'm gonna lay down a couple slices at a time. My slices went weird this time. The lines are going up and down and normally they're going the other way. So whatever way your lines are facing, you wanna turn it so that when you chop it, you get little pieces. Which means I have to turn mine all different directions. There we go. So little pieces, little pieces, little pieces. And you guys, this is how I'm gonna do this. You can do it like me too. I'm gonna turn my burner on. And as I cut my onion, I'm just gonna put it in here because I like it to cook a lot. So I'm gonna turn my burner on to five, to medium. Yeah, I like medium, that'll work. Yeah, yep, 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 so five. And then with each chunk of onion I do, I'm just gonna put it in there. So I'm just gonna grab a few little slices, chop them up. It's gonna get messy, but I don't care what it looks like. Am I gonna cry tonight? We'll see. <laughs> I'm feeling like we might have a good onion. I would be very happy to not cry. I just don't feel like crying today. <laughs> okay. Couple slices, that is not a good pile. Don't make yourself a wacky pile, make it easy on yourself. Choppy, choppy, chop. In the pot with you. Make sure when you turn your oven on, you actually turn your oven on. <laughs> C, C. The C for carrots, really? What's C for? Hopefully it's not carrots. I'm just cutting. Okay. Chop an onion in the pot. You guys don't have to cook your onion first if you don't want to. If you like your onion crunchy, you can just put it in a bowl with your other veggies. I don't like my onion crunchy. I want to cook the heck out of it. But the recipe says to cook it all together. Not this girl. I'm a rebel. I'm a rebel without a crunchy onion. These look like onion shoestrings. You know those like old school funny shoestring potatoes? That's what my onions are looking like. They're just like skinny little strings. Whatever. Just cooking. Almost done. This is taking me a long time. I'm just chopping in every direction. Just kidding. 
Chopping here, chopping there, chopping, chopping everywhere. It's like Dr. Seuss cooking. I think I did it by George, by golly, by Jean. Okay, all right, we are done chopping, but we are going to need a big knife. Yeah, we're going to need a big knife or a pizza cutter. So I'm just going to wash mine to use for our breadsticks. I'm going to wash it real quick. I'm also going to wipe off my cutting board, but first I'm going to stir my onions. I like a spoon that has like a nice roundy. You know, mine's a little flexy rubber guy for onion stirring. And then you just glue it in my meatball. Okay, now I'm going to wash off my cutting board. Get the onion off my cutting board. Good sponges, you guys. What is the best? Any brand recommendations for sponges? They just don't last. Really annoying. Okay. So my onions are cooking. You want to join me? Tablespoon of olive oil and some onions. We're getting nice and soft already, just like I like. We're going to add our veggies in in a moment. And actually, actually, friends, let's prepare our, uh, our tray for our Parmesan breadsticks. So we're going to need We're going to need another cookie sheet. So if you don't have another cookie sheet, you can put your meatballs in a bowl and put a new piece of foil or whatever. Which I'm making it up. I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to grab my tongs and clean this baby up. Meatballs are so cute. I'm so hungry. Well, that was fun. That was easy. I got my tinfoil. Let's see back over here. So I'm just going to throw away my tinfoil. That's magical. Give my onions a stir. Always stirring our onions. When your onions make you happy, you can put in your carrots and your celery. I'm really close. And you can put them all in at the same time. That's fine. 
So if you're still chopping your onion, thank you for putting B for veggie. Um, that's fine. So I think what we're gonna do is, everybody all together, we're gonna cook our veggies. So let me turn this down. Can you guys, um, okay. Oh, good, good, good. You guys are already doing beef for veggie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you guys are so good. You're so good. Carolyn, Tommy, Loretta, Nikki, Elizabeth, Shannon, Katina, Amber, Schmerky, Rolly, Mom, Lady, Sterling. Good. All right, friends. We're good. We are good. So what we're going to do is we are going to put, if you haven't already, you're going to put a little olive oil in your pan. I'm going to pull a little more. Just a little bit. All the veggies are in. All the veggies in. The other thing that goes in now is our thyme. Thyme. We're just going to do a teaspoon of thyme. You're supposed to do two if you're using fresh, but I'm not using fresh. If you're using fresh, you're gonna do two. So that's going in now with your veggies. So stir this in the oven. And now while, you, while your veggies are cooking, now's the time to get your broth ready. So if you're using pans or the little jugs, get them out and get them open. We're getting serious now, friends. So good. So everyone's getting broth out open. We need eight cups of broth. A lot of broth. <laughs> a lot of broth. We're going to cook these babies for a couple more minutes. Stir them, coat them with oil, coat them with thyme. And get your broth ready. One, if you're using dried thyme, Mark, it's one teaspoon. One teaspoon. Oh, veggies. One teaspoon dried thyme. Okay, here's what's going in the pot. So once we start to soften, which they have, we're going to put in our broth. So you're measuring eight cups of broth. Hopefully on your jug, your can, it tells you how many cups you have. For those of us that made broth, all they cook, they can Be careful. Woo. Yeah, baby. Here and stuff around the kitchen. So once you pour that in there, give it a little stir. Give it a little stir. Woo. And then we're gonna wait for it to boil. I just found a piece of stray celery. How dare you? <laughs> so on the list right here, all the veggies cooked with a teaspoon of thyme. Once it gets a couple minutes in, you add your broth. And now we're gonna wait for it to boil so we can prep for our... Oh, perfect, I just dump them all in. And prep our pan for our breadsticks. So I am, what am I going to do? 
You can either put more foil back on your baking sheet. The pasta's later. We gotta let our water boil. That's actually next once our water boils. So for our, if you guys have your extra baking sheet or you've cleaned off your meatballs, well, prep your pan. So um, either some more tin foil or um, cooking spray. I'm just gonna use cooking. So when your water, sorry, your broth, when your broth's in the pot and we're waiting for it to boil and your baking sheet is ready for your breadsticks, if you're making breadsticks and you're ready for the next steps, let me know by putting a B for breadsticks. That means your broth is in, we're cooking over here and your pan is ready. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These are awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good, thank you. Seven, eight, nice. We're just gonna be watching this. We're just watching it. Seven, eight, nine. Um, if you're going to use foil, I would also use spray just because that's why I decided to not use the foil. I don't, it doesn't make any sense. Very good. Nine, 10. You guys are awesome. Awesome. Everything is awesome. Oh, good to know. I'm going to remember it this time. Swiss <laughs> cheese. So I'm going to count you as a number, gonna, but now I gotta go count again. <laughs> ah, silly me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, good to know. 15, 16, 17. Okay, good, 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 good. Yay. All right, friends, very good. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get, thank you, is gonna get one egg and a small bowl. And a fork. An egg, a bowl, and a fork. Egg, bowl, fork. We're going to crack this egg in this bowl. I love you, garbage bowl. Glance at your soup every once in a while. If it starts to boil and we're in the middle of something, just turn it down. But yeah, I'm still cooking along. So then with your egg in the bowl, you're just going to get a little whippy. A little whippy. Okay. Very good. Next up is our puff pastry. It's coming to your counter or your cutting board or whatever. It is so defrosted. <laughs> so you're going to unfold it onto your surface. I really hope this doesn't stick or I'm going to cry. <laughs> we'll find out. Unfold it. We don't need our little plate anymore. Cute. 
Good. So if you have a brush, you're going to want to use a brush. If you don't have a brush, you can use the back of the spoon. You can even use your hand. You can use a rubber spatula. One of these babies. You want to? So we're going to brush the egg on our pastry. I just really, I think I'm going to turn mine over because that's how it is flour. And I don't want it to stick. There we go. Okay. Mine had flour on one side and not flour on the other. So I put flour side down so it sticks. It doesn't stick. Okay. Come here, egg. So you got a brush, rubber spatula, spoon, whatever. We're going to paint. We're painting. Painting. It's just like art your heart out. Painting, painting. It's beautiful. <laughs> Gorgeous. Get all the edges. This is what's going to make all the seasoning stick. How you doing, water? Broth, whatever you are, you're doing good. We're going to pause after this. Go back to souping. Painting. Sure there's no questions. No questions. Oh, it's so weird. Egg is so weird. It's not like watercolor. <laughs> Hey, I didn't need to use all my aid. I have a little extra. I'm just gonna dump it. Hey, I don't know about you guys, but my soup is boiling. So I'm gonna take a break. If you're not done painting, it's okay. You can come back to it. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our pasta to our soup. Oh, yeah, we left out our half cup, right? You're going to use your half cup. Oh, no, that, that means you didn't pull it out with us earlier. We pulled it out at the beginning. Um, you can come back to it. Just leave it on the counter. It'll defrost pretty quick. And it's only three ingredients, literally three ingredients. So just leave it on the counter for now, Rosemary, and I'll make sure you know what to do later. So half cup measuring cup. And get your pasta. Once you're boiling, which I am, get a little stir, get a little stir. We're gonna put in three quarter cup pasta. Yeah, that's fine. You can do whatever you want. So I'm just using my half cup. I'm gonna do one and half cup and then half of a half. But you know what, you guys, that doesn't feel like enough pasta. I'm doing two. That feels like not enough pasta. When you go to put it in, if it doesn't seem like enough pasta, just put some more. It's fine. But also, we're going to put our meatballs in. I just really don't put more. It's your soup, friends. Do what you want. We are also going to put in our meatballs. So we're going to throw these babies in. So, you know, a cupish, a cupish of pasta, whatever looks good to you, and your meatballs. Everybody in the pan, except for the spinach. Not yet. I'm starving when we get to this stage of our recipe. I just want to eat. <laughs> Time is that? It's only 6.15? Awesome. Good job, us. Okay. My pan is clean. I love it. Okay, so we give this a stir. 
We're going to let it cook some more until the pasta is soft. I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. Yeah, and I'm gonna get my spinach out. Yeah, the oregano went in. Wait, no, oregano wasn't in this one, was it? No, no, the oregano was in the meatballs. So we don't have any, we did those a long time ago. The oregano's in the meatballs. We had time in here, but we did that one because we talked about it. So I'm gonna get my spinach out of the fridge so that it's ready. Brand new. I'm going to put away some stuff. I have a lot of stuff going on. It's not like me. Too much stuff. Back to the tree. Oh my gosh, my breadcrumbs make me even happier. Oh. By a woman owned company, gluten free, woman owned, just like all these good things. Okay, so everybody's in. I set a timer for five minutes. Spinach is ready. We just got to come back to these babies. So what we need with these babies next is Parmesan cheese and dried rosemary if you have it. You could also use garlic. You could also use dill. You could get crazy. I'm gonna use both my cheeses as I can. So what we're gonna do next is the rosemary. When your puff pastry is defrosted, you're unfolding, covering with egg, and then we're gonna cover with cheese and rosemary. And that's it. I have a brand new rosemary. I gotta take the little package, you know, the little thingy off. So even if we're not 100% together, friends, you're not gonna get too far behind. I'm just gonna do it for those that are ready. So it says a cup and a half of Parmesan cheese. Here, let me write it on here for us. There I go, wanting to spill Parmesan all wacky. And it says one tablespoon rosemary. You'll remember that rosemary, huh? <laughs> okay. There we go. So I'm just gonna sprinkle. Yeah, fresh rosemary will totally work. I almost used that because I have some growing outside, but so I'm just gonna sprinkle you guys because I love the sprinkle. Sprinkling, sprinkling. Okay, I'm gonna use my other kind because I want to, because we get to do what we want. This one's harder to sprinkle. <laughs> You've never tried nutritional yeast. It's very interesting. <laughs> good. Very good. And then with your rosemary same, you don't need a lot. This has a lot of flavor. And if you want to, like I said, you can sprinkle some garlic, which I might do. That sounds kind of good. 
adjust my my timer's only got a couple minutes left on my soup here. Remember, we don't freak out when timers go off. We just go, oh, timer's going off. Let me get to that. Yeah, so I'm stirring my soup to check my noodles. If you did find the little teeny tiny noodles, then they'll probably be done. Mine are a little bigger. Oh, they're soft. Oh, yeah. They're soft. So here's what's left. Let's discuss. What's left is putting in the spinach, and it only cooks for one minute, and it'll wilt, and your soup is done. So you can do that now. I think I'll do that now. I'll do that now. And then you can just let it sit. Um, the dill, I was just gonna tell you that. Let's do this. Let's do our spinach. Four cups to me, it looks like four handful. One, two, spinach shrinks. So it's gonna look like you have all salad sitting up in here. It'll shrink. I just don't feel like you can ever have enough. And stir this in and then I'm going to turn it down below because we have to finish these. So stir that in, you got to push it in there. Oh, it's so cute. And then tell me, thank you. When you serve this, when you put it in a bowl, if you want to, you sprinkle a little dill on top. You can do lemon juice or lemon wedges. What did I put? Yeah, lemon wedges. And even some Parmesan cheese. Woo -hoo. That'll be how you serve it. But it is officially not being made. So I'm just gonna turn it to low because these babies have to cook for a few minutes and we gotta finish them. So wherever you are, keep doing what you're doing. I'm just going to sprinkle my rosemary. I'm just going to put a tablespoon in my hand. Sprinkle it from there. You kind of grind it up with your fingers a little bit so it's not like little sticks. Because it's kind of sticky. It's like pine needles. Give it a little grindy. You guys, I really feel like I want some garlic. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get wacky and wild. Put some garlic powder. Where are you, garlic powder? We use a lot of garlic powder. Is it gone? <laughs> Don't be gone. No. No. So, oh, maybe, maybe. I've got some of this stuff. It's not very good, but I'm going to use it because I want garlic. Thank you, Tina. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of garlic on here. It just sounds fun. There we go. And then what you're gonna do with these babies is you're just gonna slice them into strips and it says 10. So you're gonna get five per. You can just eyeball it. And this is why I said you can use a pizza cutter. Maybe I wanna use a pizza cutter. And then you're going to put them on your baking sheet and they just cook for 10 minutes. 
one, two, three. So you make four cuts, that gives you five strips. They're huge. <laughs> one, two. And honestly, you guys, it doesn't matter if they're big, small, just, you know, make them about the same size. That's the rule. Okay, am I gonna be able to pick this up? Maybe I need a spatula. Spatula. Yeah, I put him too close to the edge. I didn't have him. Come here, baby. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> That's fun. I um, mean, you have these will get puffy, so you got to space them out on your can. This is the technique, the spatula. Okay, this is going to be a two panner. They're big. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can fit them on my stone. Let's try. Straighty, straighty, that's your plan. Okay, okay. All right, here we go. Let's see if this is gonna work. This is like, you guys, I just made soup, so then we can have these good sticks. <laughs> I curled it. Uncurl. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna just gonna let them get close. That's what I'm gonna do. I mean, if it grows into one big blob, then I'll just have to eat it, right? There's worse things. I go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to curl this one. I'm going to curl it. There. It's, oh, it's a jig. It's a jig for Jen. So then these babies go in for 10 minutes. So excited. And that's it. I guess we could have cooked these before we chopped our veggies. Oh well. You never know. You never know how stuff's gonna turn out. So now we can clean up our kitchen. Thanks, Elizabeth. So, here with you while we clean up, finish up. Um, our breadsticks are cooking for 10. It says 10 to 12 or until golden brown. So if they look raw, you know, cook them some more. Um, our spinach is in. When you serve it, you can put some dill, some lemon, and some Parmesan, any of that on top. Ooh, it looks good. I'm so hungry. And that's it, right? I've got quite a mess going on in my kitchen. <laughs> oh, I love to dump out my garbage.
Come with me, garbage bowl. Yeah, I need to, uh, <laughs> this is not clean at all. Temperature, 400 degrees still. We kept it at 400 from the meatballs. Thank you, Brock. I got egg everywhere, parmesan everywhere, flour. How many minutes did you say? 10, start with 10, Loretta, and then check them. It says 10 to 13. Yes, much better, getting better. We did it, friends. That wasn't too bad. You're welcome, Donnie. That wasn't too bad at all. If only we had started the breadsticks earlier, it would have made everything perfect at the same time, huh? But it is good, good, good. All right, everybody. I really hope you enjoy your dinner. Please, please, please let me let me know how it goes. How did it taste? And also, I would love to know how cooking classes go for you. Like, do you appreciate the recipes? Uh, this, does the speed go okay? Oh, you are, that's because you made a double batch, huh, Karen? Yeah, um, so just let me know if you have any feedback, input. I always wanna know. I'm so proud of you guys. You've gotten so independent. You're doing such great stuff. And I love, love, love seeing your pictures. So keep that coming. Order your cookbook if you want one. This recipe will be on it probably by tomorrow, maybe the next day. Um, and I think that's it. And maybe we'll make acorn squash next time. All right, friends, enjoy your night.